is expecting from the budget. Uh, Pat McFadden, uh, Shadow Chief Secretary of the Treasury, joins me now. Uh, first of all, you must be pleased about the energy price cap guarantee being extended. That's going to make quite a difference to people, isn't it? Well, this is one of a number of things that we've called for, which if the pre-budget speculation and leaks and briefing are to be believed uh, that the government's going to do. And there's a bit of a pattern here where we call for things like extending the uh, energy price guarantee or, or keeping fuel duty where it is. And we're accused of being incredibly fiscally profligate and uh, the rivers will run red and Labour's going to bankrupt the country and so on. And a few weeks later, uh, the government adopts what we're saying. But uh, I don't mind if we lead the way as long as they do the right thing. And I think it's important to do that because the cost of living crisis has not gone away. People are really struggling to pay their bills. And as things stood, those bills were scheduled to go up another £500 uh, a year in a couple of weeks' time. So I think it's right to extend that guarantee. So if, if they're nicking your policies and they've, they've stolen your policy on childcare, it's difficult for you to criticise it, isn't it? Well, uh, we welcome what, uh, you know, childcare being put uh, as a big part of the budget. We've also been talking about this a lot in recent months. And the reason we've been doing that is the costs are so expensive for parents that it's become, it's become a workforce issue, it's become a real economic issue because every business that we speak to, uh, every, and also public sector employers, talk about shortage of staff. And any of your viewers who've had young children in recent years will know just how expensive this system is. So we're going to look at the detail of what's announced today, but certainly Labour has been saying for some time that we need to help parents with childcare if we're serious about addressing the workforce issues uh, in the economy. Uh, and that's what we want to see from any childcare announcement. Well, the government's announcement is expected to cost £4 billion. Uh, it's, a, it's a big sum of money. If you win the next election, you're going to have to make it work, aren't you? How, how, how well, does that compare with the cost in, of your scheme? It's in, we're always very careful uh, with the, the cost of schemes because we're always asked, how are you going to pay for it? And quite yeah. rightly, when we announce a policy... So, for example, uh, on our childcare uh, proposal, we said we would fund it out of abolishing the non-DOM status uh, where... You know, there's a wealthy uh, a tax break for wealthier people where they can choose the jurisdiction in which they pay their tax. Uh, and we said we would fund our proposal out of that. There's been quite a lot of spending announced by the government uh, in recent days. We've had £5 billion for defence, potentially £4 billion, uh, for this. Other announcements today. I don't mind being asked, how will you fund things? But I hope it's a question for Conservative ministers and not just Labour spokespeople too. Mm. Uh, we need to fix the economy, that's pretty clear, isn't it? If this budget helps the UK economy improve, it's going to mean that Labour stand a harder chance of winning at the, the next election, isn't it? What would, what would you rather, a, a fixed economy or a Labour government? Well, I want a Labour government, but... Uh, Over I don't, a fixed economy? Uh, I, I don't think that's the choice. But this is the big question, is economic growth. Uh, whatever the individual measures in this budget, the backdrop is we are the only G7 country not to recover our pre-COVID position. And the IMF has forecast, forecast us to have among the weakest growth of major industrial countries over the next two years. As long as that's the pattern, incomes will stagnate and it contributes to the industrial action that we're seeing today. Uh, there's upward pressure on taxes uh, and there's also pressure on our public services because we're just not generating enough wealth and although there may be individual measures which we've called for uh, that will be announced today, I think the government's failure on long-term growth is the really big indictment of their 13 years in power. Another element that we are expecting to be announced today is possibly an increase in public sector pay. Of course, we've got all of these, these strikes today. Um, potentially, we think the government may suggest a public sector pay rise of up to 5.5%. To Do you think we can afford that as a country? Well, I think... Uh... It's important that people are getting a decent pay rise when inflation's been running at 10%. Uh, it's for the government to negotiate this precise figure um, what with would the unions. Offer? Uh, well, we'd have to be round the table negotiating uh, with it. I mean, we've been reluctant, I think quite responsibly, uh, to get drawn on a specific percentage because these things are always a negotiation. And what saddens me about the industrial disputes is there's maybe been... Uh, 
too much rhetoric. And here we have the government legislating uh, with a threat to sack nurses when we should be hiring them. They've got to get round the table and resolve these disputes because yet again today, in a number of sectors of the economy, we've got major industrial action with no end in sight. But isn't it a bit woolly to, to say, you know, the, the government isn't isn't doing the right thing here, but but not to put a, a figure on what, what you think is the right thing to we're do? We're not a party to the negotiations. If we were in government, we would be. And I can assure you... But the negotiations you, are very public, aren't they? We, we never know what had, the nurses want, we know what the teachers want. We, we never had these kind of strikes when Labour was in power because we generated the economic growth to make sure that the public services were funded properly and the people who worked in them were properly rewarded. That's the approach that we'll take if we get into government. Right now, the government's got to negotiate uh, a settlement to these disputes, which gets people back to work and stops the inconvenience to the public. Mm. Away from the individual disputes, but a, a more broader across the, the board public sector pay rises, what level do you think would be a sensible level that wouldn't fuel inflation? Of a percentage pay rise? Mm. Actually, that's got to be negotiated. Look, the bigger backdrop to this, the pressure on But pay... that's not down to the workers, is it? Well, that's, not, that's not a figure that the government is going gonna, is gonna... to talk to the workers about this is a figure that the government's going to have in their head. We can't go above a certain point because well, it's going to fuel Well, if they have it in their head, they haven't, they haven't uh, said what that is. But the bigger problem, it comes back to economic growth. Why have people's incomes stagnate, stagnated? Why are they really feeling the pinch? It's because we haven't had enough economic growth in the past 13 years. And although we've had a lot of budget leaks about individual measures, what we haven't had is any sense that the Chancellor and the Prime Minister are content to do anything other than manage decline. The problem for the Conservatives now is they've been in power for 13 years. There's no one left to blame uh, when we look at the economic growth record. And it's that growth record that has left incomes under pressure, taxes on an upward trajectory, and yet our public services are still creaking. The only way out of that is better economic growth. And that's what we're really looking for in the budget today. Mm. Um there may be some things in the budget that, that you would support. I mean, we've already talked about childcare and, and support for energy bills, maybe fuel duty um, help as well. Will you stand with the government on, on policies in terms of, of, of this budget if you think they are good for the population? Yeah, we will, because uh, you know, very often the government says Labour's not fit to run the country, they're reckless, they're irresponsible, yet time after time they are adopting things that we've suggested. We've already discussed the energy price freeze. We suggested freezing uh, fuel duty. Uh, we put childcare uh, at the centre of the political agenda. We also said there needed to be more action to, uh, for investment allowances to get businesses to invest more. Uh, we've really been setting the agenda for these things. It does seem that the government really doesn't have many ideas of its own. We shall see. Pat McFadden, Shadows Chief Secretary of the Treasury, thank you very much.